Hi viewers, welcome to my channel. And today's topic is subdural hematoma. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. You know. And the link for the website is just below this video in the description area, so you can click the link to visit the website. And please do not forget to subscribe this channel. Subscribe button is just below this video too. Now I come to the topic, what is subdural hematoma? You know, subdural hematoma uh, occurs when the blood collects in your brain surface uh, beneath the skull, you know. And the subdural hematoma can be life-threatening and they usually result from the head injury or the trauma in the motor accidents, you know. And uh, these kind of hematomas are either acute or maybe the chronic, you know. And the acute subdural hematomas uh, commonly uh, formed because of a severe head injury, you know. And approximately 20 to 30 percent of the people regain full of the partial brain function after having an uh, acute subdural hematomas, you know. And the chronic uh, uh, type of the subdural hematomas develop due to the minor head injuries, you know. And a blood clot on the surface of the brain is also called subdural hematoma. The next thing is what are the causes of subdural hematomas? Well, a subdural hematoma occurs when the vein ruptures between the skull and your brain surface, you know. And, uh, you know, acute subdural uh, hematomas, uh, you know, in that case, you know, if you sustain a major brain injury, uh, this area can fill with the blood and uh, it can cause the life-threatening symptoms, you know. And this is called acute subdural hematoma. And it's the most dangerous type of the subdural hematomas, you know. And the acute uh, subdural hematomas uh, may be caused by the car accidents or maybe the falls or maybe the blow to the head, you know. And so these are the most common uh, uh, types, you know. Uh, the reason, in fact, you know, the causes, you know. And the acute subdural hematomas, they form very quickly. And the symptoms appear immediately, you know, and about 50 to 90 percent of the people who develop the acute sub uh, dural hematoma, uh, uh, like uh, a die from the condition or its complications, you know, because it's a serious, um, uh, serious kind of a uh, problem, you know. The next one is the chronic uh, sub dural hematomas. What are these and what are its causes, you know? You know, they are usually caused by the mild and the repeated head injuries, you know, and these are the common in older adults who repeatedly fall or hit their heads, you know, and thus some chronic subdural hematomas occur with no apparent cause, you know, and uh, the higher rate of this condition is in older adults and may also be because uh, the brain shrinks as you age, you know, and this uh, causes the extra space in the skull, you know, and allowing the veins to be more easily damaged, you know, uh, during a head injury. And uh, the symptoms of the chronic subdural hematomas are not noticeable immediately and may not appear for several weeks, you know. And the chronic subdural uh, hematomas are easier to treat than if compared to the acute subdural uh, hematomas, you know. And uh, they can still cause life, you know, like uh, life-threatening complications, you know. The next thing is what are the symptoms? Well. You know, the acute subdural hematomas are caused, uh, cause the symptoms uh, straight or right away, you know, immediately, you know. And the people with the chronic subdural hematomas may have no symptoms at all, you know. And the common symptoms of the subdural hematomas are like slurred speech, maybe loss of consciousness or coma, you know, severe headaches, numbness, dizziness, weakness, VO problems. And uh, yeah, these are the common symptoms, you know. And you should go to the doctor right away or call the emergency services straight away. And these symptoms are also signs of uh, other very serious health conditions. And the symptoms of chronic uh, subdural hematoma can be similar to the symptoms of the dementia or the stroke or maybe the tumors, you know, or uh, other problems in the brain, you know. So uh, you need a differential diagnosis, you know. The next thing is how do doctors diagnose that you are suffering from subdural hematoma, you know. Well. A subdural hematoma can be diagnosed uh, using the imaging tests like CT scan or MRI scan, you know. And uh, these uh, scans provide your doctor with an in-depth look at your 
brain or skull or veins and blood vessels you know and uh, these scans can also reveal if there's any blood or clot in the brain you know and your doctor may also order a blood test to check your complete blood count and a complete blood count test measures your red blood cells white blood cells count and uh, a platelet count you know and uh, a low level of the red blood cells can indicate the significant uh, uh, blood loss you know okay and uh, your doctor may also give you uh, like a physical examination you know or to check the heart rate and uh, blood pressure and to see is there any evidence of bleeding you know so this is helpful to to diagnose you know now once diagnosed then what are the treatment options is the next question you know you know acute subdural hematomas can only be treated uh, uh, in operating room you know and a surgical procedure called uh, uh, craniectomy it may be used to remove the large subdural hematoma you know and it's normally used to treat acute uh, subdural hematomas and uh, in this procedure your surgeon removes a part of your skull in order to access to the clot or the hematoma you know and then they use the like suction and irrigation to remove it you know and uh, for an acute subdural hematomas a craniectomy uh, craniectomy may be used to uh, may be necessary for the as a life-saving procedure you know but uh, it still has risks you know and uh, in one study uh, it states that about 18 percent of the patients die within 30 days of the surgery okay and uh, a bore hole can be used to drain the chronic subdural hematomas as well as the acute ones uh, that are similar than one you know, like uh, if they're smaller you know like uh, less than one centimeter you know and the first year surgeon creates small hole in fact holes in your uh, skull you know and then places the rubber tubes in them you know and the blood from the hematoma drains out through those holes you know and uh, and through the recovery, you know, it's very slow, you know, and about 80 to 90 percent of the patients experience significant brain function improvements, you know, uh, after this procedure, you know, but the recovery is slow. And your doctor may prescribe the anti seizure medications to treat or to prevent any seizures, you know, that might be caused by the subdural hematomas, you know, and the medications may be used to treat your brain injury. Corticosteroids are often prescribed to reduce the inflammation in the brain, you know. Now, the next thing is what are the complications of subdural hematomas? Well, the complications uh, may occur soon after the injury or sometimes after the injury has been treated, you know. And uh, the main complications include like the brain herniation, you know, which means that uh, uh, it puts the pressure on the brain and can cause the coma or maybe death, you know seizures and the permanent muscle weakness and numbness so these are the common complications you know and uh, the extent of the complications depends on the severity of the brain injury and uh, other health issues may affect by the chronic or uh, subdurals you know so uh, maybe acute subdurals you know and uh, the people who take the uh, anticoagulating which are the blood thinners you know like aspirin they are at high risk you know and the people over the age of 65 also have the high risk, especially for the chronic type of the hematomas, you know, subdural hematomas, you know. Uh, uh, as the outlook is concerned, you know, the seizures can still occur even after the recovery, you know, from the subdural hematomas and uh, it has been removed even, you know, so even then the seizures can occur. And your outlook for the recovery depends on the type of the brain injury and uh, where it's located and uh, how quickly you reach to the emergency room you know, or operating room, you know. So, but generally it's, uh, outlook is not favorable. No? Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Thank you. Goodbye.